So what um, we've been talking about here is to the station in Perth. Here we have separation now of the third stage. It's burnt its fuel. We don't need it anymore. Nine and a half minutes into the flight. And we're now starting the next phase of the journey. Frigate, the upper stage, is taking the wheel. You can see there the third stage moving away. And Frigate is that gold structure. It's got six spherical tanks, and they're organized in a circle. Yeah, uh, four for propellants and two of them for avionics. A bit like we have in a cockpit of, uh, of an aircraft. So for flight control systems, navigation, communication, and so on. And the satellites are attached using a special dispenser on top of it. Frigate's getting ready to switch on its engine. It's in what we call the pre-burn phase. It's giving a quick burst of acceleration to push the fluids back in the tanks and that's to make sure that there's enough propellant to ignite the engine properly. It's a little bit like uh, when you're in a car and you put your foot on the accelerator. So here is the scheduled mm -hmm. first ignition of the frigate yeah, upper stage uh, for its first burn. It's going to burn for just over 13 minutes. And frigate's job is a very important one because frigate's really has, as we said earlier, taken the wheel now. It's going to deliver our satellites to their drop-off point in space. And it's going to take it another three, three hours and 38 minutes to get there. We're going to have several, uh, two main propulsion phases during that time, aren't we? Yeah, yes, you're right. So the, the first burn takes, uh, takes us to what we call the to what we call the transfer orbit, yes, we wait for that, yeah. And then um, we will uh, switch off the engine and we'll coast for about uh, yeah, three hours and 15 minutes. And then we will have the second burn. So this one uh, will take us um, to the, what we call the separation orbit, where we will relieve uh, our satellites. So it should be on a circular orbit. The Galileo constellation is being built and launched bit by bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Guru elements oh, of cool. the yeah. Soyuz launch are being assembled. Oh, cool. Galileo so satellite other. seven and eight will soon be sent on orbit. The yes, Galileo Spencer. program is solidly back on track for its deployment phase. Let's At the end of 2013, Galileo successfully completed its in-orbit validation phase when ESA tested the system extensively using a mini constellation of four satellites. The first fixed position based on Galileo signals only was a historical moment. And the results of the test campaign on roads, at sea or in the air showed that the system design was good and sound, opening the door for the deployment of the rest of the constellation. Last August, the launch of the first full operational capacity satellite suffered from an injection anomaly, the two satellites being sent on an elliptic orbit instead of the circular one. Hopefully, after intensive work, both satellites have been recovered. They're now on a quasi-circular orbit where they are tested to confirm that they're working perfectly. Analysis is ongoing on their future use in the overall Galileo system. That allowed a green light for continuation. In particular, the launching of satellites 7 and 8 here under preparation in Kourou. During this deployment phase, Europe will be procuring another 22 satellites. Of course, as the constellation is completed, Galileo's overall performance improves in terms of accuracy and availability. Therefore, Galileo's early services could start based on 12 satellites. When fully deployed, the Galileo system will be made up of a 30-satellite constellation associated to a major ground segment. The provision of improved navigation services relies also on the deployment of ground stations. The Galileo system is controlled in space from two centers, one in Oberpfaffenhofen, Germany, which mainly manages the satellites, and one in Fucino, Italy where the navigation message is generated and uplinked to the satellites via a network of remote stations distributed worldwide. The satellites then broadcast the navigation signals, including the latest message prepared by the ground segment. During this deployment phase, both centers are being upgraded so they can act as backup for each other. With the successful in-orbit validation phase and the ongoing deployment phase, and now the two Galileo satellites launched last summer showing they work properly, Europe's Galileo program is well on its way. ESA and the European Union 
are taking another step forward in completing the Galileo constellation and offering navigation services to the users. So, uh, Arian Space and the Russian partners worked hard to resolve the issues from the launcher side, and you and your teams performed a very impressive rescue operation to recover the satellites. I think you're right. Yes, sometimes uh, we learn more from anomalies than, than we do from normal behaviors. Yeah. So the, the teams are a bit like uh, pilots. Uh, you know, they are flying the, the satellites from the ground, and uh, it's a very skilled job, uh, really. And of course, we are very proud of them. So we are still on good parameters. So what they put, uh, what they did, in fact, uh, for that, they, they, they put the satellites into a safe configuration. And this was really an emergency. It had, it had to be done very quickly in a couple of hours. And then uh, they found a way to, to raise the orbits with little fuel. Let's see the details now of what actually happened to Galileo's 5 and 6. Kourou, 21st of August, 2014. At first, the Soyuz mission seems to go well. However, data analysis then shows that its two passengers are on a wrong orbit. Since then, the causes have been understood and Soyuz is back on duty. But for the Galileo satellites sent on an elliptic orbit instead of a circular one, solutions had to be found. The first tasks were in Darmstadt by the joint ESOC-CNES team in charge of the usual post-launch activities. The work turned into a rescue operation with crucial decisions to be taken right away. So they managed to recover the orbit in a um, few hours and within the visibility of the tracking stations because I mean when you go to the next tracking station you lose basically satellite, you have to know what is uh, the visibility from the next tracking station and this you do only if you have an orbit reconstructed. Once the satellites were secured, they could be transferred to the supervision of the Galileo Control Center in Oberpfaffenhofen near Munich. Then the best maneuver strategy had to be chosen and the recovery scenarios defined. We um, developed together a maneuver strategy and then we execute, we execute them. A uh, number of maneuvers were performed. We are talking about 14 maneuvers per satellite. Securing the birds in space was one thing, but at the same time, the ground segment overseeing all Galileo systems needed to be able to work with them. So it had to be sure that the operations in space were in line with the capabilities of the system on the ground. And the good news is now is that we've now recovered the satellites. Uh, so we've, we've taken it to what was uh, even a... Um, a scenario which was well outside of its operational parameters and now we've moved it into a place where they can be used and can be salvaged. So in, in that, from that respect we've saved the mission. With all these maneuvers and reprogramming, the satellites are now operable on a corrected target orbit. This is already a great achievement because it is the first time that their type of OHB built satellites are in space. So it's essential to be able to test them for real. Now, since they work well, it might be possible to fulfill the actual goal of this launch, the navigation mission. We've done a number of studies at the beginning to see what would have been possible to reprofile this mission. It was our intention from the very beginning to recover the mission. So now we are in the process of discussion together with the European Commission what can be the operational usage of these satellites. At ESA, we are convinced that the satellites can be used. Different tests in ESA labs and at manufacturers have checked the capabilities of the satellites. Even if they are on a different orbit, they could now contribute to the overall Galileo constellation. Yeah, I think uh, we've learned a lot more about the spacecraft design uh, for the FOC spacecraft, uh, how it behaves in real life in ways that wouldn't normally have been apparent if everything had gone perfectly smoothly. The two Galileo satellites we feared lost should be able to work jointly with their space companions and the building of the European navigation system can now continue.